Indeed, gracious Lord, to thee alone we raise our sacrifices of praise. You've been gracious to us, Lord. You bless us with a new day and a new dawning, Lord. We believe, O oh God, that this your grace that has brought us this far today will carry us through the day and the week as well. Gracious Lord, may we continually, O God, raise our praise to you as we go through this day. May your joy, O God, be found in our hearts May new songs, O God, be raised out of our hearts unto you, Lord. For you've been gracious. You've been gracious. Thank you for every step of the way. Have your way even as we share your word. And let your name be praised at the end of the day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Brethren, for when I say this now, the this I showed up at purpose to encourage us, me, myself inclusive, and anyone that is out there who needs encouragement from the Lord. There might be daunting challenges and difficulties that we have faced on sometimes it seems on every side sometimes it seems you push and push and push and push and push sometimes you might have questions on your heart and mind if the lord is really aware of what you're going through but the truth is that the Lord is aware and he has kept you to this time and he will keep you true and you will sing the victory song unto the Lord. Let's quickly look at Zephaniah chapter 3. I would have preferred to read from probably the 12 through to 20, but I will start from, I think, verse 16. 16, 17, and 18. 16, 17, and 18. In that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, let not your hands slack. In other words, let not your hands be weak. That day could be this day that the Lord is speaking to us. Let's look at the system. Saying that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not. Fear thou not. Fear thou not. And let not thy hands slack. Brethren, fear becomes a snare. Fear becomes a snare. Fear brings limitation on us. Fear creates doubts in our hearts. Fear can paralyze us when we ought to stand and make decisions and fight the battles that we are faced on daily basis. Fear can keep us as prisoners. But the scripture says that in that day, when the Lord will favor Jerusalem, when the blood of his son will be shed on our behalf, 
when our king will take his rightful place where our lives are concerned, he says, fear not. And let not your hands slack. A slacking hands cannot carry that which the Lord has mandated it to carry through. A slacking hand will not carry out what God's purpose is designed for your life to be done. A slacking hands will give the enemy an advantage over God's people. When you read First Samuel chapter 17, 32 to 33, for 40 days, the Philistine champion will come out and will abuse the people of God, will abuse the people of God. But on this day, the, the son of Jesse, David, has shown up in the battlefield. And this is what he said to Saul, the king who was supposed to lead the battle. He was so much afraid. Confidence, can you give me the scripture? First Samuel 17, 32 to 33. This is what David had to say to Saul. Let no man's heart fail because of him. Because of who? The challenges that you have faced on day-to-day basis. Because this man looks like he's a giant and he's more skillful and he's been fighting his battles right from his youth. But David stood that day and declared to them that let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. The boldness with which David exhibited and made this declaration. And look at what Saul said. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine, so fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. Why would David say, let us rise up, or I am ready to go and fight this uncircumcised Philistine? Because he knew the Lord was with him. Fear makes you feel like, oh, you are alone and you are alone fighting these battles. Oh, the Lord cannot come through. But the Lord says that in that day, which is the day of the Lord, let it be said to Jerusalem, do not be afraid. And don't let your hands be made weak. In Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 1 to 3, confidence, let us look at that scripture. When thou goest out to battle against thy enemies, and seeth horses, chariots, and a people more than, than thou, be not afraid of them. Brethren, this was a command the Lord was giving the children of Israel. So Saul and Co, who were not willing to go and do the battle, probably had forgotten what God had said to them. But the Lord says that when you go to battle, it's possible you meet horses, you meet chariots, you meet people who look mighty and more powerful than you. But be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee. That is the understanding David had. That I'm not going to this battle alone. 
But the Lord, our God, is with thee. And I want to assure you this morning that the Lord is with you in all the battles that you face with. The Lord stands with you. And by his spirit, he will guide you through and will show you mercy. He said that this Lord God who brought you out of Egypt is the same God who is going to be with you. The verse 2, let me read to the verse 3. And it shall be when ye are come now unto the battle, that the priests shall approach and speak unto the people. Other versions will say unto the army. And shall say unto them, Hear ye, O Israel, ye approach this day unto the battle against your enemies. Let not your heart faint, fear not, and do not be troubled, neither be ye terrified because of them. I say to you, neither be ye terrified because of the battles you face on day-to-day basis. So in the, in the verse 17 of Zaphania, let's go by confidence. The Lord thy God is in the midst of thee, is mighty. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will say, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Can you picture the Lord thy God this day with thee in that office, in that community? The Bible says he is mighty. Who is going to fight our battles for us? He is mighty to save. He is mighty to heal. He is mighty to bring deliverance. He is mighty to bring restoration. He is mighty to bless. So you will say, fear not. And let not your hands be made weak. For the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Somebody want to say, for the Lord my God in the midst of us is mighty. You want to declare for the Lord my God this day as I go through the day, the battles that will range against me for the Lord my God. He is mighty to save. He will be mighty on behalf of everyone that is connected to my life. The economical battles that I face, he is mighty to save. The health battles that I face, he is mighty to save. He is mighty to deliver. He is mighty to show his faithfulness. David stood and said, I will go and face these battles. For the Lord says, when we go to the battles, we will see the horses, we will see the chariots, we will see mighty men that will come up our way. But his word of command to us is that we should not fear. Brethren, we serve a mighty God. In those days, it was the kings that would go to battle. Will lead a battle. But in our day today, it's the king of all kings that leads the battle. And if you know you walk with a mighty man, you will not be afraid. You will not be afraid by the, by the terror by night. You will not be afraid by the arrows by day. You will not be afraid by the things that the enemy sets before you. Oh, the Lord will say to Zerubbabel, they will become like a plane. They will be leveled. The valleys will be filled. The mountains will be leveled. The crookways will be made straight. So be not afraid. 
And we realize that when David took that bold step, he saw the victory of the Lord manifested in his life. In John chapter 14, verse 1, Jesus had to say this to his people or to his disciples. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. Brethren, where there is fear, as I said before, it's like a snare. Where there is fear, it's like a snare. It paralyzes the people of God that must rise and wage battle. It creates doubts in our heart. So Jesus will look around and say, do not be afraid. Do not be troubled. Do not let your heart faint. What you need to do is to believe in this God who goes to battle with you. Believe also in me. Today, we are more advantageous. Believe in his work on the cross. Believe that indeed he has delivered and he has saved and he has healed you. Believe that he has prospered you in every step of the way. Believe that the Lord your God is mighty. I want us to pause that you want to lift up a prayer. But first and foremost, you want to address yourself. That every fear that has taken hold because of the battles, Lord, I read myself out of it. Every fear, every fear, every fear, for the Lord says to me that I should not fear. For the Lord says of me that my heart should not faint. For the Lord says unto me that he is there in the midst of thee to save. And he will save right early. For the Lord says of me that you will indeed will see them. You want to declare unto yourself. But let not your heart fail. I hold on to your word this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hold on to your word of grace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that my heart will not fear. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that my heart will not fear. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that fear will not paralyze me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the fear that caused my hand to slack in the things that the Lord has caused me in, called me into. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, my hands will not slack. But I will wage the battle that I ought to wage in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will wage the battle of life. I will wage the battles of the calling of God upon my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I will wage the battles, O oh God, where my health is concerned, and I will be successful. Thank you, Lord Jesus, this morning. Your name alone be praised this morning. Father, we encourage ourselves that we shall not be afraid. We shall not be afraid. But we hold on to you. We acknowledge that you are in our midst. We acknowledge that at the end of the day we will be victorious. We acknowledge that we will succeed in you. We acknowledge that your presence is with us at all times. Our hearts will not fail. Thank you, Lord, for every step of the way. In Jesus' name, amen.